A topic that is really underrepresented in recommender system research is dealing with the effects of time. One example is seasonality. Some items, like Christmas decorations, only make for good recommendations just before Christmas. Recommending bikinis in the dead of winter is also a bad idea. Picking up on annual patterns like this is hard to do, and most recommender systems won't do it automatically. As far as I know, this is still an open problem in the research arena. Those of you looking for a master's thesis topic, there you go. But something you can do more easily and more generally is taking the recency of a rating into account. Netflix in particular found that these sorts of temporal dynamics are important. Your tastes change quickly, and a rating you made yesterday is a much stronger indication of your interest than a rating you made a year ago. By just weighting ratings by their age, using some sort of exponential decay, you can improve the quality of your recommendations in many cases. Or you can use rating recency as a training feature of its own in addition to the rating itself. As we mentioned in the context of Amazon, the product you're looking at right now is the most powerful indicator of your current interest. Time plays a big part there as well. Whenever you train a recommender system using historical ratings data, you are giving your system a bias toward the past. A Netflix that didn't take time into account would end up recommending a lot of old shows to you instead of the hot newer ones you want to see. If the things you're recommending are time sensitive in any way, it makes sense to use rating recency as a training feature of its own. I could keep on going with real world lessons, but I'll end with this one. In the real world, a recommender system you're building for a company will ultimately exist for the purpose of driving their profit. You may find yourself being asked to optimize your recommender system for profit instead of pure relevance. What does that mean? Well, normally you test different recommender systems based on what drives the most purchases, video views, or some other concrete measure of whether a customer liked your recommendation enough to act on it. If you're trying to build a recommender system that introduces people to new stuff they want, then that's the right thing to do. You just want to optimize on the quantity of items your recommender system drove the consumption of, not how much money those items made for the company. But in the real world, some items are more profitable than others. Some items might even be offered at below cost as loss leaders to attract people to your site, and recommending them actually cost your company money. This presents a bit of a moral quandary for developers of recommender systems. Do we keep our algorithms pure and optimize only for users' interests? Or do we work profit into the equation by rewarding algorithms that generate more profit? The euphemism for this is value-aware recommendations, where the contribution to the company's bottom line plays a role in whether something is recommended. If you're ever faced with this dilemma, a reasonable compromise is to only use profitability as a tiebreaker. If you're showing top 10 recommendations to someone and the underlying scores for the top two items in that list are about the same, it wouldn't do any harm to show the more profitable item first. Items higher in a list are more likely to be clicked on, we call this position bias, and if you're really not sure which item should come first, you may as well go with the one that will earn more money for your company. Optimizing too much for profit can backfire though. You don't want to end up only recommending expensive items to your customers because they'll be less likely to purchase them. It might make more sense to look at profit margin and not actual profit so the cost of the item isn't really a factor in what you recommend.